Hello, everybody. Another edition of Region Football Weekly in our Centier Bank studio. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday night. I'm Jack Thiel alongside me, Mike Delon. We got Zach Snelly producing today's show. It's regionals this week as we concluded sectional championships. Last week, we only have three region teams left, and two of those three region teams will be facing off tomorrow night, which should be a good one. We'll talk about both of those regional games that we'll be covering. They are both of our game night built by Von Tobel, which you'll be able to view on the IHSAATV.org website. We'll be posting the link periodically tomorrow for you guys to view. So once again, if you're looking for that link, it's going to be on IHSAATV.org. You're going to click that link, look for our Facebook page Friday during the day. Throughout the day, we'll be posting it periodically. You click the link, and it'll take you to that game. Crown Point and Pendant's our first one. It's at 6.30. Kickoff and Envelpo and Merrillville, that's a 7 o'clock kickoff as well. And we're also going to talk about all conference teams. The, uh, the list has been released over the past couple of weeks, so we're going to talk about some of those conferences who have released that list. And Mike DeWan over here is going to go over First team, second teams, honorable mentions, and overall who he was very impressed with. And of course, we'll conclude our show with our games to discuss. Only two of them, so Mike has a better chance of going 100% Let's hope so. than last week. But our first game night built by Von Tobel, which we'll talk about today on the show, it's going to be Valpo at Merrillville. This one, it will be 7 o'clock kickoff. We'll be live on site at about 6.30 PM. It's our game night built by Von Tobel. Two DAC opponents going at it. They faced earlier in the year. That game took place at Valpo where the Vikings won 26 to 24. Overall, Merrillville does lead the series in 21 to 19. And both of these teams are probably as even as it gets because you're very familiar with each other. You have two great head coaches in Bill Marshall and Brad Cease. Let's start with the Valpo Vikings. A good response by them after that close Chesterton game to defeat Michigan City. 26-7, to they've now won six straight sectional titles for the Vikings. The passing game, there was more promise than the past weeks. You know, it's been a heavy dose of the running game with the passing game. We finally saw some light as there was 129 passing yards from Justin Clark. He did throw an interception but had a touchdown as well. He also ran for 146 yards. Uh, 24 carries and three touchdowns. Thomas Berta, he had 109 yards on 21 carries, but 262 rushing yards as a team. That is their bread and butter going into this matchup tomorrow night. Julian Stokes had three catches for 82 yards and a touchdown. They had five sacks last Friday, two by B Brady Blaschke. They forced four interceptions, and three of them came from Tyler Verscher. They won last year's regional contest versus Merrillville with their defense. They forced three turnovers in that one point win and only allowed 236 total yards of offense. But Vikings haven't won at Merrillville since 2018. It's been a couple of years. Like we said, these two teams met last year in this same format, this same metting, uh, setting. This time mm -hmm. it was at Valpo, this time at Merrillville. It is very promising to see that passing game evolve a little bit because we have seen this Maryville defense. If you are one-sided on offense, they will stop that, and they will hold you to probably your lowest output of the year. We saw that against Munster with yeah. Daniel Askerdam, who's had so many great games over the year, right. had his lowest output against this Maryville defense. And then last week against Morton, a team that scores a lot of points, they only scored 18. We'll talk about a little bit more, but... For Valpo, I think that is the biggest W for them is the fact that they're able to get the passing game going a little bit in preparation for tomorrow night. Yeah, it's uh, that was a great bounce back win against City. I know a little banged up. I, I Tyler Bush had a great recovery, but I don't think he played. I don't think he was the man under center for City, and Valpo took advantage of that, forcing a couple picks. Of course, Tyler Verscher, a, an all-state guy last yeah. year, had plenty of plays on the ball last year, had a couple picks, and... He kind of had a slow start to the year in terms of those eye-popping numbers that kind of got him on that All-State team last year, but this was definitely his best game of the year. Getting three picks, it doesn't get much better than that from the DB position. But, yeah, you mentioned it's it's their bread and butter. Whoever they put at running back, they're, they're going to run for, for a buck yeah. and whatever. It's Their O-line is fantastic, and, again, they, they, they do the job again in their sectional. They're sixth straight, and Maryville's on a little streak of their own, but these are two teams that are very talented, and they have to play a very solid brand of football if they want to come out of this regional on top. Yeah, for the Pirates, they defeated the Morton Governors 42-18. to It's their fifth straight 
sectional title win for the Pirates. Trey Stevens was apparently not feeling too good. Possibly the flu game last Friday. He had 101 yards and two touchdowns. Javion Gills had three touchdowns and 86 total yards. J.Q. Johnson, he was back in action after nursing an injury at 85 yards on the ground. The defense, I mean, this Maryville defense is as good as it gets. They held a more offense of six points until giving up 12 in that fourth quarter, but that's when the backups were really in for the Pirates. Last time these two teams played, we talked about it earlier, Valpo won 26-24. They gave up 237 rushing yards in comparison to 59 for the Pirates. So it was a very big discrepancy on the running game for both teams. Now, Dante Pope, he did have 199 passing yards in that loss. So he was able to throw the ball a little bit more, but this is at Merrillville. And that's where the Pirates are best. They're 6-0 and this year. And in their last 32 home games, they are 30 30- and two. That's so impressive. They are unreal when it comes to playing in their home stadium. Then from 2019 into 2021, they won regionals three years in a row. Brad Seas had his ball club going, but last year he couldn't complete that four straight regional title because the Velpo Vikings were able to win that game. But still, Maryville Pirates, we talk about it every week. This is a team that, look, on offense, they can easily put up those numbers. I mean, they put up 42 against Morton. I believe they put up more than 40 against Munster, mm-hmm. but it's the defense. This defense is really the bright spot of this team. It's really what gets the motor going just because that's how you win games. Look, offense sells tickets. It sells popcorn yeah, sales. It yeah. sells candy bar sales, whatever your, your preparation is. But um, for the win a football game, you got to make stops. And that's what Maryville does. I mean, you talked about Munster team. Lowest output total against Maryville. Yeah. Morton. Low, total lowest output. Mm-hmm. This is a defense that is for real. And for the Vikings that, look, we've seen them. They're able to run the ball. We know that's the case. I mean, you go back to that last game, 237 rushing yards. And that was without Davis as well. Right. So you got to remember that Travis Davis, who is out, did not play in this first meeting. So Merrillville saw Thomas Berta start. It's not like Davis was the guy. It was Berta. And for the Pirates, that's where it's going to come down to. How can you stop the running game? And I believe if they can hold Valpo to un- under 200 rushing yards, that's that's the recipe for success. Because yeah. for the Vikings, we know they can score the ball. But the real key to this game, I think, for both teams is who are going to make those stops. And from the past weeks, it seems like this Maryville defense might have the edge over the Valpo defense. And they're a different beast at home. That 30-2 and two record yeah, in the last 32, that, that's something I, that's that's crazy, to say the least. The Purple Palace, that place is always jumping. Those bleachers yeah. are huge right off of I-65, man. That is a fantastic stadium. Both played there and just seen a game there. It is it is you a fantastic environment. Yeah. yeah, a couple Pop Warner games over there. I never We never <laughs> got a chance to play Maryville, but Pop Warner, man, those, you know, even when we're – when we're 10, 11 years yeah. old, those games feel awesome. That's just a credit to how awesome that stadium is and how tough it is to win a game there. But, yeah, for Maryville, again, both these teams, I mean, they're here for a reason. They're, they're yeah. both very balanced. Either unit, either offense or defense, could win them a game. When you look at kind of these one-unit teams that are, you know, maybe have a very solid offense but not a good defense and vice versa, you're relying on one unit to win yeah. you the game. While with these two teams, maybe your offense isn't playing well. Your defense, you know, can keep them in and give you kind of a second chance, a second unit to rely on in case one isn't working. And, again, that's why they've had so much success in the sectional, and then they just end up usually meeting here. And, yeah, it's going to be a good one. You, you harped on it for Merrillville. Again, you have to kind of be able to run the ball and do everything balanced. You cannot be one-dimensional – on your offense. Again, yeah. while Valparaiso, they may be able to get away with that, it's also good for them to kind of show some passing, which they probably are going to need against Merrillville. And for Merrillville, again, coming off a solid rushing game, from what we saw last time against that stout Valpo defense, you're going to need to turn to guys like Trey Stevens and J.Q. Johnson to run the football and open up some passing yeah. lanes for Dante Pope to maybe find, you know, Javian Gills, who had a fantastic day, and John Peters, who was a solid two-way threat, who also can get open, and he had a solid game against uh, against Valpo last time they met. So, again, just so much next-level talent on yeah. both sides of the ball. And shout-out to the environment for, for letting oh, us yeah. host it, man. It's, it's going to be a fantastic game. Regionals, we talked about Maryville, is just unbelievable at home. Last year, these teams faced twice. Maryville got the first game. Valpo got the second game. This year, Valpo got the first game. And we'll see who gets the second game. Once again, it's our game night built by Montobo. Kickoff at 7 will be live on site at about 6.30 p.m. 
once again, that link is going to be on our Facebook page tomorrow throughout the day. It's going to be on IHSAATV.org. So if you watched previous sectional games that we've been covering throughout the month, it's going to be that same place where you've watched those games. It's going to be a different link, like I said, throughout the day tomorrow. We're going to be posting that link for this game. And with that being said, we'll talk about our second game night built by Von Tobel after the break here on Region Football Weekly. But you're watching us on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Update your kitchen or bathroom with Von Tobel. Get 20% off select cabinets now through October 28th. Von Tobel has cabinets and vanities in a range of styles and colors. Plus, built-in storage, countertops, and flooring. Our designers will help you find the perfect selections for your style and budget. Scan to visit VonTobels.com today to book your free consultation at one of our four Indiana showrooms. Von Tobel, building better together. When life takes you places and you can't get to the store, shop online with Strack and Van Til to go. Our to-go service is easy to use and it can save you time and money. Once your order is in, our own Strack and Van Til team preps your order with care. For delivery or pickup, enjoy the convenience of letting our to-go team shop for you. Enjoy your special moments. Sign up online today at shop.strackandvantil.com. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's, the insurance professionals in Highland, Merrillville, and Michigan City. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. Have you checked out Centure Bank's student checking account? This no-fee checking account is perfect for students and teens ages 14 to 24 and comes with all the features you need to succeed, such as a debit card, digital banking, and automatic deposit. Centure Bank can help you start establishing good spending habits today for your better tomorrow. For more information, visit centure.com slash student checking or visit your local branch. If you are under the age of 18, your parent or guardian must also sign on the Centier Student Checking Account. At the age of 25, your account will automatically convert to the Centier Checking Account. You must deposit $25 to open this account. This account is not eligible for overdraft advantage. Member FDIC. Back here on Region Football Weekly in our Centier Bank Studios. Now time to talk about our second game night built by Yvonne Tobel, Crown Point at Penn. This is a 6.30 Central Time kickoff. We'll be live at about 6 o'clock, 6.10 at Penn High School, Freed Field, and what should be one terrific football game. You have two head coaches who know what they're doing. Obviously, Craig Bazia, in 31 years, he has 239 wins, and Corey Neoman, and in 21 years, has 208 wins. So combined, you have coaches with over 440 wins. It doesn't get any better than that. But Penn has crown points number. These teams have only met three times in their histories, and Penn has outscored Crown Point 73 to 6. That includes the last meeting, which was a regional championship on November 10, 2017, where Penn won 33 to 3. But this is a different Crown Point team. This is a Bulldog team that has just dominated every team they've played throughout the year. That included Lake Central last Friday night, where they won 42 to 7. They were leading 42 to nothing at halftime. They outgained LC thirty or three hundred and thirteen or two or twenty two 
in yards in the first half. That is not a typo. Almost out, out yarding them th- by 300 yards in the first half. It's another shutout for the Crown Point Sutters as they took out pretty much all the starters to start that second half. It's their first sectional title since 2018, their eighth in school history. Noah Ehrlich was perfect. He was 9 for 9 with 194 yards and four touchdowns. Larry Ellison, 18 carries, 113 yards and two touchdowns. But Crown Point regionals have been where they're kryptonite in a way. They haven't won one since 1988. But like I said, this is a different ball club. You have a Crown Point team that's 21 and 1 in their last 22 games. For the second time in school history, they went undefeated in back to back regular seasons. For the first time in school history, or not first time, they broke a school record by only giving up 6.6 points per game. 14 points is the most they've allowed all year. They've only had eight games where they've allowed seven points or less. And the offense as well complements this defense. Six games where they've scored 40 points or more. And they have 59 offensive touchdowns on the year, 24 passing and 35 rushing. And we really never, I don't know, we've never seen this Crown Point team struggle the only time we have was against Velpo they were able to respond make the adjustments at halftime come back and win but other than that no team has really been in the same game as them I want to say I mean it's weird to say that because here we are in regionals and they have dominated everybody they've played now maybe the teams they've played aren't the same type of caliber the team's pen plays but nevertheless both have beat Velpo but for crown point Keep doing what you're doing. I mean, it's just what we say every week because this is what they do every week. They get a huge lead. They outgain their opponents by so many yards. And then the backups come in at least by the fourth quarter (laughs) and have the starters rest. But crown point, they do have to go on the road. They've been so used to playing at the dog pound. They haven't been on the road, I believe, in almost a month. It's it's been a little bit. It's going to be a different environment, different atmosphere. Obviously, the dog pound is going to probably travel all the way to Penn High School yeah. just because they do have great home fans. And they, I know they're very excited for this one just because of how good Penn is. But for Crown Point, they've got everything you need to win a regional championship. It's looking like it. This is kind of the team, again, as great as this team was last year, an undefeated regular season. Of course, they unfortunately lost to Lafayette Jeff. This is a, a lot better team, yeah. I, I think, personally. Again, it's, it's shout out to them for winning their first sectional title. And in a couple years and doing it again in the fashion we kind of expected them to. We thought this would be a close game. At least I did, a little bit closer yeah. than what the score said. But, yeah, they, they, they rained on that parade pretty quickly. They're just a different team at home. But this is, like you mentioned, that was, that was a great nugget. But they haven't been on the road in, in a minute. Both their sectional games were at home. They had a bye that one week. And then I believe their Week 9 matchup against City was at home. So it's they haven't been on a bus ride, you know, for for a while. And that's, yeah. and that's not an easy bus ride to Mishawaka going from Crown Point, so that's something they really have to be accustomed to, have to get on the bus and get ready to do some business because this Penn team is is a team I think they they have not played anybody like them before. This is a team that gave Valparaiso fits, yeah. and Valpo was a team, again, that had Crown Point's number in that first half before Davis kind of getting hurt in that third quarter and things kind of went differently. So this is going to be a very, very fun one at Penn. Yeah, and you got to think, I mean, for Penn, they are synonymous with Indiana high school football. Yeah, you got to talk about the best teams in Indiana, you say the word Penn, Everybody, the light bulb clicks in your head. You know about Penn High School and this football program. At least in this top half of the state, I'd yeah. say. You know, you, you want to talk about all the indie schools, the Ben Davises, mm-hmm. and New Palestine, Center Grove, all, all the talent they have down there. But when you kind of come up here north of north of Motor City, you know, down there, it's it's – Penn is kind of the team yeah. to beat up here, at least at least in the 6A, I'd say. And they played a really good Warsaw team and won 31-10. to 10. The defense only gives up 7.8 points per game. So you have two defenses who are giving up less than 8 points per game. The offense has only scored 40 points twice this year. So if Penn is going to win this game, it's going to be on the defensive side of things. But out of their eight games, their last eight, they've shut out six. So this is a Penn defense that is for real. You could even say maybe better. Than Crown Point. Now, Penn has had some games where defense has had a couple of mistakes and teams have scored more than 20 points. But when that Penn defense is on and the, the switch is flipped, good luck scoring against mm-hmm. them. But nevertheless, Nolan McCall, the quarterback, he's a dual threat and he is a problem. He gave Velpo plenty of problems week one throwing the ball and running the ball. They also have Auden Jones, senior O line, and on to D line as well. He was 2022 6A junior All State member. You have Venny Freeman. 
Marcus Freeman, the head coach in Notre Dame, that's his son. He <laughs> plays for the Penn Kings. That's man. a cool little nugget, man. That's it is. Awesome. It's awesome. Because wonder, wonder if he's watching. Marcus Freeman, hey, Coach well, Freeman. show up to the game. I know up. there's been a couple of videos. Notre Dame is on a bye this week, so possibly Marcus Freeman can make his way out to Penn right, High School coach. in Mishawaka, Indiana. That's awesome. They are seeking their first regional title since 2017. That's where they beat Crown Point, 33-3. to They played Valpo, like we said. Both teams have played Valpo. They did a better job holding Davis. And if you remember, Davis didn't play the full game against Crown Point. Davis played the full game against Penn. Only 105 rushing yards. So Penn was able to hold Davis to a lower amount and a lower workload. Then Crown Point was able to in the middle of the year. Nevertheless, this is a Penn team, like I said. They're not going to beat you in a shootout. It's going to be defense. They're going to stop you. Crown Point never has faced a defense like this. I can't think – probably Maryville would be maybe the closest one, but that's a different Maryville team than they were around that. Maybe yeah. Valpo. I mean, this is a, a – yeah, Valpo's a game to look at between these two teams. It's just, they were just two different times of the yeah, season. Yeah, it's two different times. You go to like the third game of the year to the sixth, seventh game of the year. Penn's opener was Valpo, you know. Yeah, it's, so it's, 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 it's tough to compare. Absolutely, but this is a Penn team, like we said – when you're facing the Penn Kingsmen, you know that you're in for a treat just because it's going to be a great football game nevertheless, but also you know you're going to have your work cut out for them because Corey Neoman is one of the best head coaches in right. the area. I mean, you look at it, 208 wins in 21 years. I mean, that is unbelievable, and only 55 losses. Mm-hmm. As always, one of the all-time coaching win leaders in Indiana. Yeah. In only 20 years, I mean, if you think about it, a lot of the coaches we talk about, they have 30, 40 years. You know, give him 10, 15 more years. Let's see how many more wins he could rack up and climb up that leaderboard. Nevertheless, this is Penn, Kingsman football, some of the best in the area. Obviously, a lot of teams are familiar with them in the region and all of other sports and no region teams. Penn is really like the region's kryptonite in a way. Yeah, I mean, all roads kind of lead to Penn, especially yeah. those big dogs. You know, Valpo, of course, had their run-ins with them, and it's that's always a fun series. But, yeah, for those big schools, Penn is kind of the team to beat if you want to kind of get far and make a trip to Lucas Oil. And, yeah, like you were mentioning with, with Coach Yeoman of Penn, 208 wins in 21 years, I mean, that's about nine wins a season. So it's, yeah. I mean, that's just a fantastic number. Of course, you play you play at least 10 regular season games, and, of course, you play more if you if you have some postseason success. And this is one of the guys that can kind of go toe-for-toe toe with Coach Buzia and what he's done with Crown Point. But for Penn, it's they were a very similar team to Crown Point, in my opinion. Again, yeah. a very stifling defense, 7.8 points given up per game, very similar to Crown Point's number. And then just, I think, a quarterback battle of the ages. Again, uh, of course, we like Noah Ehrlich. He, he's definitely a candidate for our all-area teams coming out pretty shortly from here. But, I mean, Nolan McCullough, again, we, we, we covered a Penn game this year. We, we, we were at that Valpo opener, and this was a guy, I think he won the superhero of the game for yeah. for that match. I mean, he was just, you know, throwing the ball across the field, but he, he could also carry, and he's a tough runner, and it's it's just, it's going to be a fun one, yeah. man. It's 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 what makes postseason football so great. And, again, shout-out to Crown Point for making it this far. Penn is kind of one of those teams where we expect to be, but this is going to be a matchup for the ages. And I think a difference – Looking at this game, we'll probably talk about it in the games to discuss, but Penn, they play some tough teams. They do. Their opponent's record just is kind of a stat in this chart that kind of sticks out to me. But Crown Point playing, you know, a lot of DAG teams, which is a tough conference in my opinion, but Crown Point makes it look easy. But the record from Crown Point's played, the combined record of all the guys they played, 47-58, and 58, and Penn's is 66-50. and 50. So that is, that's yeah. a big difference. Again, Penn, sometimes they go down south. I know they played Cathedral this year and lost to them. That is their one blemish on their record. Yeah. But they run into some teams, and they're pretty well battle-tested. But nonetheless, this is going to be a beauty. Yeah, I think the battle-tested thing will be interesting. We kind of saw it last week with Hanover Central and West Lafayette. You know, West oh, Lafayette great was game, man. so battle-tested, and they've been in those situations compared to Hanover, who had all these blowouts. And they kind yeah. of play easier teams to the competition of West Lafayette and the Red Devils were able to come back and for the Bulldogs, maybe in the same territory, you play teams that aren't familiar with coming back. You know, Crown Point hasn't really had a team come back against them. You know, they kind of blow them out of the water in the first half. That's it. Game's over. Kind of enjoy some mm-hmm. um, RB dives and sweeps. And <laughs> yeah. A running couple clock. nail downs, yeah. But for Penn, you know, this is a team that hasn't had many blows just because of the competition they play. And we talk about only 7.8 points per game, but that's also because, like we said, they play a lot of great teams. You mentioned Cathedral. That's a really good football. Like It doesn't really get better. No, I mean, those are the guys you talk about. Yeah. For Crown Point, like you mentioned, playing four quarters, if I remember correctly, I mean... Valpo's the only game. Valpo, and I think they the starters kind of stayed in for that first Lake Central meeting, but other than that... I think the fourth, the middle of the fourth, they kind of went out. Right. But still, I mean, the only it's... time they played all four quarters 
it has got to be that Valpo. Game. And there's a way to look at it. Again, you you kind of want guys fresh. I mean, there's a way to look at it that way where maybe you're not playing. Yeah. You got you got talented guys enough where they may not need reps, and they they know what's expected of them, and they know how to play a four quarter game. But you you kind of want to again experience that fourth quarter yeah. fatigue. You got to go through and you got to dig deep. And that's a problem maybe we saw with Hanover last week. Again, they were up 35-14 to 14 with two minutes to go in the third. And once the fourth quarter hit, things just got away from them very yeah. quickly. And West Lafayette, a fantastic game. But that's that was last week, and this is this week. And we're looking forward to yeah. another fantastic game we're expecting tomorrow. There's so. a difference between trailing in the second quarter with two minutes ago and trailing in the fourth quarter with two yeah. minutes ago. There's so many different things, and Crown Point hasn't experienced that yet. Penn probably has, on the other hand, so that's kind of where I'm going to be looking at. Mm-hmm. If this is a close game, get to that fourth quarter, how does Crown Point look? Do they look like they can seize that opportunity? Do they look ready to kind of, if they have the lead or if they have to come back, can they execute? For the Penn Kingsmen, the same thing for them because they have blown out a lot of teams as well, but they also also has been in a lot of closer games than Crown Point. Yeah. And then maybe does that where your opponent's record comes into play because Crown Point's opponent record – it's 47 right. and 58. You face a couple teams who only have two no wins on the year. On, on the other hand, for Penn, you play in a tough conference. You beat a tough Warsaw team by 21. This is a Penn team that is very familiar with having those close games, with having those games where you do have to play your starters all four quarters. So you made a great point, and I'll be curious while watching this game. When we get to that fourth quarter, depending the score, if it's a close one or if Penn's ahead, how does Crown Point look? Do they look fatigued, like you mentioned? It's, Do they? Can they make those adjustments they need to? Can they make those adjustments on the fly? Yeah. When you only have about two minutes to talk with your OCs, your DCs, and you have to go back on the field because at halftime you can say, look, we're up 42 nothing. Go out there. Do whatever it is you guys want to do. That's all you have to say. You know, Crump Point said that in probably 90% of their games. The only time they haven't was all C for a little bit and Velpo for the entire Yeah, week. I mean, they showed they can bounce back from adversity. Yeah. I mean, but – Looking at this team, going back to kind of the four quarters, I could probably count on one hand on drives or you know offensively or defensively where we where we need a score here or we need yeah. a stop here. I mean, I'd probably say Lafayette Jefferson. There was probably two not, of those being down being quarter. down ten nothing. And you yeah, know but that's the thing is that's the first quarter. Right. I think it's a totally and I and that's why I say I think this is how Hanover Central went through it. It's such a different atmosphere when you need that stop in the first quarter. Crowd standing on their feet. Compared it's, to the fourth you know. quarter. Because Hanover Central, going back to that game last week, they never trailed. And they always had a huge lead. And I bet you when they had huge leads, the other team, the opposing team, they just folded over. They yeah. said, congrats, you won the game. Have a good week. West Lafayette said, no, we're a great football team. We're not folding like that. That might be the case here at Crown Point. Let's say they jump to an early lead. Or they're trailing if they need those stops. Can their defense get it? It's a loaded team, don't get me wrong, with Seamus Molaski, Will Clark, Nate Kalk. But at the same All time, guys, yeah. when you're not exposed to that atmosphere, people standing up, getting loud in the fourth quarter, when the game is on the line, not when you're getting ready to go into halftime, I think it's a totally different atmosphere than what you're used to. But this is a Bulldog team that knows what it takes. Craig Bazia he's obviously been in that situation many a times as a head coach. So... I'm not saying they're not ready for it. I'm just saying it's going to be interesting how they respond to adversity late in a game on the road. Yeah, the thing is, I mean, if they didn't have the coaching staff, they do the fantastic coaching yeah. staff and the players to make this, I would be definitely pretty concerned. It, it is kind of something that's to look out for. Again, playing a, four, a full four-quarter game against a very solid team like Penn, but I think this team is ready for anything. Yeah. And, you know, even though they haven't been through a, maybe a – a game where they have to really, really dig deep Especially and maybe get in the at their bag. Especially and being on, the, on road. the road, of course, they played Valpo at home, had the home crowd, again, at their bag. Their toughest road test was probably Lake Central, but Crown Point yeah. probably had more you know, they played, than Lake Central. It, they night. played Maryville at home. You know, it's – you, you don't want you this know is, it's kind of a luck of the draw of a way you know I you don't want to say, say like is, you want to chalk it up to luck but this is something that it, it's to take account for and again being in a hostile environment playing a very talented team yeah. you have to be ready to dig deep and it's something they may not have ex- experienced yet in a type of environment like this I will say this is probably the first time Crown Point's not going to have the most fans there that's true all yeah. the road games even at Lake Central they had about more fans than LC did on the other it side. was a close call yeah so this is the first time Crown Point's probably not going to have the most fans there in the stadium because you bet all those Penn Kingsman fans are going to be there in attendance for this game. But it's going to be a great one. It's our game night built by Vontable. 6.30 kickoff. We'll be live at about 6 o'clock 
610 on site. Remember, the link's going to be on IHSAATV.org. We'll post it periodically throughout tomorrow. So you guys can just click the link, and it'll take you right to the site. You'll click play, and you'll have yourself one great football That's game. That's for sure. We're going to take a break here on Region Football Weekly, but when we come back, we're going to talk about some all-conference teams. Mike DeLon's going to give through a rundown on those, but you're watching us on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and code upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4, ajobdoneright.com. Earn while you learn from the best hands in the business. The Bricklayers Allied Craft Workers for Indiana Kentucky Apprenticeship. That's right, this is a paid apprenticeship. I'm getting an education while learning a trade and getting paid for it. The thing that surprised me the most about this apprenticeship program is the respect I've received after the proper time and training. Classes start soon, so apply now. There are training centers throughout Indiana and Kentucky. We are the Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers for Indiana Kentucky Apprenticeship. The best hands in the business. For over 100 years, Burns Funeral Home and Crematory has been assisting families in their time of need. Serving Northwest Indiana, the staff at Burns Funeral Home will help guide your family in creating a meaningful ceremony. From a simple to elaborate to traditional or unique, the caring family at Burns Funeral Home will tailor a ceremony to fit your needs. And for your other loved ones, Burns Funeral now has a pet cemetery and crematory. Visit Burns Funeral Home. Dot com or give them a call at 219-942-1117. Lights Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blythe's can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblythes.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop. Back here on Region Football Weekly in our Centier Bank Studios. Thank you for making us a part of your Thursday night ahead of the regional championships taking place tomorrow night. Remember, you have two game night built by Von Tobel. 6.30 kickoff is going to be Crown Point at Penn. 7 o'clock kickoff, it's going to be Valpo at Merrillville. We'll talk about those games a little bit more later in our show. But right now, it's going to be our all-conference teams. We have three conferences, actually, I believe we're going to talk about today. Yeah, didn't get the GLAC yet. We didn't, didn't get, get the, the Great Glack. Lakes. The GLAC uh -huh. is lacking. So, yeah. nevertheless, we do have go. three all-conference teams, which are awesome to read just because we've been covering these teams, these players throughout the year, and to see some of them get recognized and have these accolades, I know it means a lot to them. For I've been sure. seeing it all over Twitter and Instagram, the, the football accounts, and them personally tweeting about it. You can see how proud they are of their accomplishments, but also the team accomplishments. Mike, take it away. It's always a fun recognition. It's uh, Yeah, we have, the, we have the GSSC, the great South Shore, we have the Northwest Crossroads Conference, and we have the Duneland. So we're still waiting on the Great Lakes. We'll we'll be sure to post those on our websites. But we, yeah, we posted all these lists last night. Uh, it's yeah, all the list, the full lists are on our website in case you miss any names. But to start with the GSSC for the Bishop Knoll Warriors, we have Kyle Sapowski and Julian Ramirez first team, and Elijah Boone and Darius Anthony honorable mention for the Boone Grove Wolves. They had the most selection, or I believe one of the most selections. I think they're tied or a little less than Wheeler because they were fantastic in the conference. That's how, that's how these are divvied up. What team gets you know how many selections? But for Boone Grove, for the first team was Mark Rowland, Tyler Torbson, Corey Noonan, 
Hunter Anthony and Chris Gonzalez. For the honorable mentions, it's Hunter Noonan, Khalid Alzir, Josh Oglesby, and Johnny Bobos. For the Calumet Warriors, for the first team, Jeremiah Henderson, Javon Lawrence, Alex Ponce. Honorable mention, Derek Santiago, Amari and Chandler Terrell, and Darren Haygood. For the Griffith Panthers, the young Griffith Panthers, first team was Jackson Lawson, the stellar junior running back, and Nolan Davenport. For honorable mention, Dean Ellis and Rosalio Cortez Jr. For the Lake Station Fighting Eagles, first team Brian Washington and Dalton Tremble. For honorable mention is Aaron Padilla and DeAndre Wilson. For the Ingots of River Forest, first team Aiden Silver, another fantastic junior dual threat quarterback who also plays defense. De'Aris Beeson, a very solid linebacker and lineman. Caleb Short, Jeremiah Stansill. And for the honorable mentions, Royce Thompson, Aurelio Arana, and Carlos Villagomez, I believe he's a sophomore, so shout, shout out to him. South Central Satellites first team, Zach Hancher, Cole Nealon, Aaron Hogan, honorable mentions, Kevin Heagley, Tyler Carr, and Braden Lautenbach. And for West Side, first team, Amara and Yalber, Giuseppe Moore, Reynel Bodie, Marcel Dixon, and for the honorable mentions, Jeremiah Sims, Ladaria Newell, Kiowa Burrell. For Wheeler, I believe they had the most selections out of the all-conference teams. It starts with the coach. The GSSC Coach of the Year goes to Nick Testa, again, for what he's done with that program. I believe they're one of the worst records in the conference, or at least in their division, and they ended up winning the conference outright, their first conference title since 2015. So shout out to Nick Testa, but Bryce Compton, Caleb Klimczak, Xavier Harlovich, Jackson Smith, and Jay Nortiz are all on the first team. And for the honorables, Tyne Vitical, Mitch Krolikowski, Braden Olson, and Jalen Bergson are the honorables for Wheeler. Rounding out, we have the Whiting Oilers, Nick Davenport, a solid quarterback for Whiting, and Gabe Eggers are the first team, and the honorables are Servando Garcia and Joseph Kuros. That is the Greater South Shore all-conference team. And moving on to my alma mater conference, the NCC. We're going to start with the 59ers from Andrean, the first team, Jaden Holmes, Jimmy Finley, two junior DBs for names to look out for for next season. We also had Luke Donjbach, Ben Novak, Micah Jones, and Jimmy Fin. Oh, I put Jimmy Finley twice. Awesome. Perfect. I'll make sure to edit that out. But uh, <laughs> second team, we had Scott Ballantyne and J.J. Bowles. And then the honorables, we had Abuka, Koye, and P.J. Cusick was the honorable mention kicker for the NCC. Moving on to the team with the most picks, the team that won the NCC in their first season in the conference, the Hanover Central Wildcats. And it starts with Matt Koontz, who was not only a first-team quarterback, but was the NCC Offensive Player of the Year. Me, personally, I think he's going to win this award next year, but I also found out, Caden, it's pronounced Verrett. It Verrett. only took only took us 13 weeks to find out his pronunciation, <laughs> but after being at that West Lafayette game last week, we deserve to pronounce his name correctly. Yeah. But he also made the first team. Colin Foy, Jacob Strominski, Wally Koontz, Ben Crossilla, and Rocco Bartlemeo made first team as well. Henry Marr, Kyron Turner made second team, and Ian Padilla, and Brian uh, Ian Padilla made honorable mention, and Brian Parker was the NCC Coach of the Year, winning the conference in his first season. Moving on to the Highland Trojans, Nick Johnson, first team as well as a Defensive Player of the Year, a very stellar linebacker for Highland, and yeah, he just flies around the field. I only saw one game of Highland this year, but. He's a dog. He's a dog, and he deserves it for sure. Blake Vanek also made first team. For second team, Hunter Sapkowski and Josh Hubbard. And Dylan Zum was the honorable mention. Moving on to the Brickies, Johnny Sorensen and TJ Caldwell, the pair of transfers who just made an instant impact for Hobart. Uh, both first team as well as Willie Shearer, Bradley Gibson, Luke Juris, Aiden Olay, uh, Vrock, uh, Xander Langford was, uh, was the first team, I believe, punter as well. Uh, Zach Bloom was uh, Zach Bloom and Connor Stafford were second team, and Josh Diaz was the honorable mention. Moving on to the KV Cougars, who had a solid year, solid year than uh, than years yep. past. Of course, Kirk Kennedy led Cougars. Marco Castro, Eli Deardorf, and Lane Zander were the first team guys. Diego Arroyo and Gabe Kissler were the second team guys, and Jaden Anderson was the honorable mention. Finally, the last two we had the Lowell Red Devils. First team was Ben Ruda, Nate v- Vujak Liha, Vujak Liha. Uh, again, beautiful job. You know, I I'd like to think so. Again, I, I those, that's a tough one, man. That's a tough one. Owen Thiel also first team, and Seth Renfust and Brody Kalwinski were all first team. Malachi James and Brock Allen were the second team, and Carter Patterson was honorable mention. And finally, the Munster Mustangs, Daniel Askadam, great running back, Jackson Collard, Owen Burns were all first team as well. Matt Opat and George Dovelos was second team, and Daniel Elias was the honorable mention. Whew! All right. Need one some water, more. Or you're good. One more. We're gonna tough it out. We're All gonna right. tough it out here. I'm 
Finally, we're moving to the deck. I believe these guys, they just had – I don't think they had teams. They just had guys that made you know just made the all-conference selection. So we're going to roll with that. We're going to start with Laporte, Kyle Friel, Kelly Hay, and R.J. Carnes, as well as Jack Doty was the most valuable kicker. So shout-out to the kickers out there. For Portage, JoJo Maybon, Xavier Anderson, and Everett McClellan. For Michigan City, Jaden Hart, Caden Pierce, Adrian Holly, and Tyler Bush. For Valparaiso, Ty Veen, Sam Ampeliotis. Tanner Young, Matt Hoffer, Justin Clark, and Caleb Sharp, as well as Drayden Wilcox of Valparaiso, was the most valuable punter for the conference. For Crown Point, we got a lot of names to list out. Jeff Machete, Paul Clark, Noah Ehrlich, who was also the offensive MVP for the conference. Larry Ellison, Will Clark, who was the defensive MVP for the conference. Drew Crowell, Seamus Malaski, and Mark Gonzalez. For LC, James Graham III, the talented receiver, Jeffrey Lucas, Jonathan Ross, and Ryder Fernandez. For Merrillville, Terrell Elmore, Trayvon Stevens, Roshan McGee, Adam Camphor, and John Peters. And finally, the Chesterton Trojans, Hayden DeMarco, Cole Gonzalez, and Garrett Lewis. Job well Ooh. done going that's, through all that's those That's the most things. I've talked all year. I mean, that's <laughs> – I got I to gotta clear my throat at the break. Well, man. Job well done. And congratulations Ooh. to all those coaches sure. and players for making those teams. It's such a huge accomplishment, seeing all their hard work paid off. Um, you know, going through this list, some of the names I've had the pleasure of calling games for and we've had the pleasure of talking about throughout the year, and they absolutely deserve to be on the list. It's just unfortunate the list couldn't be any bigger because there's so many great players. Hey, we got we got, we got more and, lists coming out, yeah, though. You do. already know. We, we already do, know. but it's so hard just because there's so many great players in the area. I know. We still have to hear from the GLAC what their all-conference team is going to look like, but nevertheless, those three conferences, thank you for getting us those. Uh, list. Yeah, for sure. A bunch of people um, from the media have been so fortunate and helpful with getting those to us, and I really appreciate that. That makes our jobs a lot easier. And for anybody who hasn't seen these lists, we're hopeful that you're able to remember all those names. The amazing Mike Delon just yeah, rambled yeah, off over right. there. Right. It, it's all on our website. Again, we yeah. posted that last night. Those whole lists kind of laid out for you guys. So, yeah, go take a look at that. But, yeah, we got something special in the works. We're still kind of working on our all-area teams, and we're going to make another list. You know, yeah. a lot of these guys featured on it, I bet. And it's, uh, yeah, a lot more where that came from, to say the least. Yeah. But, yeah, these are all chosen by the coaches, I think, of their respective teams. And, you know, coaches probably pitched in names. You know, yeah. a coach here was pitching for a kid from another school. So again, shout out to the coaches for for picking these kids. And again, congrats to all the players. This is a this is always a fun honor to have. So yeah. under your belt. Nevertheless, we'll take a break here on Region Football Weekly. When we come back, it's going to be our games to discuss. We have two of them for you. But you're watching us on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Update your kitchen or bathroom with Von Tobel. Get 20% off select cabinets now through October 28th. Von Tobel has cabinets and vanities in a range of styles and colors. Plus, built-in storage, countertops, and flooring. Our designers will help you find the perfect selections for your style and budget. Scan to visit VonTobel's.com today to book your free consultation at one of our four Indiana showrooms. Von Tobel, building better together. When life takes you places and you can't get to the store, shop online with Strack and Van Til to go. Our to-go service is easy to use and it can save you time and money. Once your order is in, our own Strack and Van Til team preps your order with care. For delivery or pickup, enjoy the convenience of letting our to-go team shop for you. Enjoy your special moments. Sign up online today at shop.strackandvantil.com. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's, the insurance professionals in Highland, Merrillville, and Michigan City. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. 
Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermaker's Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost, hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. Have you checked out Centier Bank's student checking account? This no-fee checking account is perfect for students and teens ages 14 to 24 and comes with all the features you need to succeed, such as a debit card, digital banking, and automatic deposit. Centier Bank can help you start establishing good spending habits today for your better tomorrow. For more information, visit centier.com slash student checking or visit your local branch. If you are under the age of 18, your parent or guardian must also sign on the Centier student checking account. At the age of 25, your account will automatically convert to the Centier checking account. You must deposit $25 to open this account. This account is not eligible for overdraft advantage. Member FDIC. On the tail end of region football weekly in our Centier Bank studios, thank you for making us a part of your Thursday night once again. Games to discuss, always a fun part of the show. We've been doing this throughout the year. Mike DeWan had one. L and it was a Hanover Central. <laughs> Other than that, you did pretty thanks. good. Um, you did oh, pick man. Valpo. You did pick Maryville. You did yeah. pick Crown Point. So you did good on that end. I believe that's three there. So you're three and one last week. You have two games, so shouldn't be. This is the least amount of games we've getting had to smaller, pick Getting smaller, man. Getting smaller. So your the size is lower, which means you have better odds of going 100. But the games are even tougher to yeah. pick just because they're so good. We're gonna start with our first one. It's going to be Valpo. At Maryville, it's our game night built by Von Tobel. Kickoff at 7 o'clock. We'll be live from Maryville at 6.30. Woo, we've got a good one. We've talked about it earlier in the show. The Velpo Vikings, look, this is a team that can run all over you. It's a defense that can stop you. It's also a, a passing game that's still evolving, but you do have Justin Clark, who has been in this position plenty of times, obviously being the quarterback of the state championship team last year ending the Pirates season last year yep. in this same setting. He goes to the Maryville side of things, a team that only lost by two to these pi- – or I should say to these Vikings earlier in the year at Valpo, 30-2 and two in their last 32 home games or 6-0 and oh this year. Every offense that seems to be electric and really what they do best, like we said, Morton is just score points. They score some of their lowest points. You go to Munster, who just runs the ball like nobody else. Mm-hmm. Their running game is pretty much irrelevant. So for Maryville, the defense has just been so significant. J.Q. Johnson able to come back from injury is huge. You got Dante Pope, another dual threat quarterback. You talk about the defense, Jalen Ramsey, the secondary. He's been good for them throughout the year. Terrell Elmore, another guy who has been huge for them. I'm really curious to know where you go on this one because it is hard. It is very tough because two teams are very well matched. Two great defenses, two great offenses with dual threat quarterbacks and great offensive lines. Mm-hmm. I don't know. For me, the where the game is at might decide who wins. Just because, like we said, Maryville thirty and two definitely helps in their last thirty two home games. Maryville does have Elpo's number twenty one nineteen in a series in the last thirty five years. So we talked about how last year Maryville won the first matchup. Mm-hmm. Elpo wins the second matchup. Falpo wins the first matchup this year, and who wins the mm. second matchup in the regional yeah, championship? Man, this, uh, we got we got two slobber knockers and the wise slobber knockers. the wise words of our, of our main man Rick Novak. He's uh, he's coined that over the over the course yeah. of the season. But yeah, this is ah, it's tough. I think my mind changed about five times. It's very similar to the previous meeting they had. I remember. Yeah. In my gut, I'm like, Valpo, they're the team, man. They're, you took they're... Maryville, didn't you? I know, I took Maryville, and Maryville <laughs> looked good. We, we, I think we were watching that game in here at Maryville again. They, they, I remember what they started. They, they they drove the ball down Valpo, and they, they ended up scoring first. And Valpo, they just made a couple more plays, and they got the dub at home. But the Purple Palace, man, that, it's, 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 Palace. It's, it's no joke. And, again, 30-2, and two, that's an eye-popping record. And uh, I, I Again, I think the start of this stream, I really thought Valpo was – I kept going on this game. I really think they had the experience and the players to kind of make, you know, kind of get the dub here and get get another regional. But I think Maryville, again, I think they right their wrongs. I think Trey Stevens is a very big name to look out for. He was shut down in that first meeting. I was looking at the stats prior to this, and he only had five rushing yards, I think, on four carries. 
Again, Valparaiso, a very solid defense, but Maryville, they got some guys that I think they could take the top off the defense, not only in the passing game, but with like guys like Trey Stevens and J.Q. Johnson, that kind of dual threat, dual you know, kind of backfield yeah. they got going on there, along with Dante Pope, who showed he could pass the ball you know, to Javion Gills and, and John Peters, but he could also run the ball. So it's really a three-headed backfield, and I think Maryville, they're just a different team at home. I, I really do think so, yeah. and I think, again, this is going to be a very close game. It may be even closer. No, I'm, I'm going no butt here, man. I think I think Maryville, I think it's going to be a, a reverse history from okay. from last year. So I All think right. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna ride with Maryville again. I'm gonna say this once again. I'm gonna say Maryville by two this time. It was Apple by two. I'm gonna go Maryville by two. But this game again, it's a coin flip. I think both of these are. I think it would be really cool for Maryville. And I was thinking about this because you said the Purple Palace. They should build a pirate ship out there. You know how cool that would be? Like, like, the, Buccaneers? like the Buccaneers? Yeah, and get a cannon. You know how much more of a home advantage you would have with something like that? But nevertheless, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm on with you on that one with Maryville. I mean, they should you're, get right, a, you're right, you're wrongs. I got an idea. They, You know how I-65 <laughs> is right there? They, oh, should, no. they should have like a pirate fleet, you know? <laughs> they should time it up with every touchdown. <laughs> That'd be awesome, but yeah, yeah man, that b- right. make that place even more intimidating than it already is. Yeah. Shoot, man, it's, right your wrongs, and it's going to be thirty and two. Yeah, that's home your last. 30 and, and I know Velpo years. wants to make it thirty and three, but again, it's whoever makes more plays. And I think Merrillville. Oh, I just want to say they have the edge at home. Those players become probably even better in their home environment. And Vel- again, if this game was at Velpo, I think it's a completely different game. But uh, yeah. I'm gonna go with the Pirates. Let's do it. It's going to be a tough one. Yeah, I, I, you know. It's, I ca- it's both teams with the same record, both teams who have played even opponents. You know, we kind of go yeah. through these games and, you know, throughout the weeks we said, you know, this team plays these teams and right. to a lesser or greater competition. Well, no. Valpo and Maryville, they play the same exact opponents. Right, basically. They have the same exact sample size. So it's not like, yeah, this team played a Mishawaka team. You know, that's 10-0 or, you know, 11-0. No, these teams all play the same teams in Valpo Just and Maryville. So... There's re- it really cannot get more balanced in a regional championship matchup mm-hmm. than this. And I'm very excited. Once again, our game night built by Von Tobel, 7 o'clock kickoff, 6.30. We'll be live from Maryville. And our second game night built by Von Tobel, we go to 6A, Crown Point at Penn. Kickoff is 6.30 Central Time. We'll be live at about 6 o'clock, 6.10. We talked about this a little bit at Freed Field, Penn located in Mishawaka, Indiana, about an hour, 30, hour, 40 drive. For the Bulldogs, they'll be passing South Bend. A great place to be. No bias intended. Nevertheless, Penn. Hey, we're cool, man. That's all good. Penn has never lost a crown point like in all Irish. three meetings. They've outscored them 73 to 6. That includes the last time that Penn won a regional championship, which was back in 2017 on November 10th, where they defeated Crown Point 33 to 3. But all year we've talked about this is a different crown point team, even compared to last year when they went undefeated in the regular season. I think we saw that get over that hill, get over that, you know, stuck in the passing when they dominated West Lafayette mm-hmm. after being down 10 nothing, scoring 42 unanswered points. And even last week, the big question going into that Lake Central game was, oh, LC was hanging in there without their D1 running back. Yeah. How are they going to look with their D1 running back? Well, only getting 22 yards on offense in the first half, that's yeah. how they did. So. For Crown Point, this is as good as it gets. You have a quarterback that's a dual threat problem. And Noah Ehrlich, you have Landon Delich, Larry Ellison, the Clark brothers, M- M- Mulaski. You have Nate Falk. You know, you can go down the list, and we went down that list on the, the DAC team. You know, mm-hmm. it's as good and as complete as a football team gets. But at the same time, you're facing a different monster than what you're used to. Penn is no – there is so many different things, I think, from the way Penn plays football than the way these teams play football in the region. I think the skill level is different. Yeah. I think the type of players are different in terms of how strong they are, how big they are. And I think also is the competition. We talked about it being battle-tested. That's what Penn is. Their opponent's record are 66-50. and 50. And Warsaw, who I believe was 9-1 and one going into the matchup last week, they lose to Penn 31-10. to 10. So you're beating teams by more than three or by three touchdowns with the same record as mm-hmm. you. It really speaks volumes to the team. Both of these defenses only giving up eight points or less. We talked about Crown Point, a school record for them, 6.6. Penn, only 7.8. They've shut out their six out of the last eight games. They've shut out six opponents. 
there's so much back and forth you can. Both of these teams have some of the best stats in Indiana, especially in Class 6A. Right. They played a winner of Hamilton Southeast and Westfield. That's a slobber knocker. I mean, this is a game Shout where out Rick. You, it's re- like Valpo and Maryville. They're very even. And I think the only discrepancy may be that battle-tested uh, subject that we talked about. That's definitely something to kind of note for. Again, I, I want to say that could be bulletin board material pretty yeah. soon for Crown Point if they hear us saying that. I believe, again, just because they maybe not be in that battle test, they haven't had to, again, get a huge stop in the fourth quarter, get a huge score in the fourth quarter as much as Penn may have to. I think those are guys, again, with the coaching staff and the players they have, that they're they're ready for whatever it takes. Although they haven't been there yet, they could do it when, when yeah. asked to, but... Yeah, for Crown Point, again, you brought up a very good point about being at home for these past few weeks or just not playing. It's You, you cannot start out flat against this Penn team. Yeah. Although I want to say the one – I wouldn't call it a weakness, but their defense is definitely stronger than their offense, I'd say. Again, Penn playing probably a little bit tougher defenses down there. Their offense has only gotten over the 40 mark twice. So in Crown Point, that seems to be what they just about average if they don't pull their starters. Yeah. They are a very potent offense, and I think Crown Point, they have to start off – Start out strong and kind of win that race against the against the Penn offense again. That's that's going to be a tough battle going up against that Penn defense. Yeah. But man, it, you're not going to see me up here and pick a non-region <laughs> team. It's again, it's you, you got to put on for the region. Yeah. But it's it's a tough ride. You mentioned it's all kind of roads lead to you know the Penn teams and you know you got to run in your cathedrals and all those big big schools in India. I think the stead yeah. was. A, a, a Northwest Indiana team at the highest division hasn't won a state championship, I believe, since a Portage team in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, Velpo, of course, 5A, they won it last year, but there's another division, of course, to go beyond that. And it's, yeah, all roads lead to one of those indie schools. And, of course, Penn is always on that journey. And it's going to be a tough one regardless. Again, another game that it could be either or. But I think John Harrell, the, you know, the, the guy that does all this, I think he predicted Penn by three. But I'm going to go. I'm going I'm, I'm to flip it. I'm going to go crown point. All right. I think they got the guys, man. I think okay. this is the year where we kind of see a 6A team maybe make some noise. And this is this is going to be a fun one regardless. But, I mean, this game could go either way. It's it's going to be a it's going to be a fantastic environment at Freed Field and a battle between two solid coaches and two solid football teams. Crown point hasn't played a road, a road game in over a month. That's tough, Senior man. Senior night was the last game of the regular season. You have the week off of the bye, and their last two games have been home. So it's been over a month since Crown Point has been on a road. That's tough. You you, you got to start it was out hot. That Chesterton game. You got to start out hot. It's again, Chesterton. Yeah, it's a great call. I mean, they they started out pretty flat. And seven seven in the third. If Chesterton had the skill set of Penn, you, you you can't afford to do that. Penn would have blew them out of the water. You can't afford to do that against Penn. You have to you have to play like a home game. You know, you got to hope that your fans maybe make the trip out to Mishawaka, yeah. and you got to have that same juice you would if you were playing at the Dog Pound. Yeah, the last two game, two out of the last four games, they've had slow starts. That Chesterton game and the West Lafayette game. I mean, they were down ten to nothing. And I know Penn would not let them come back or at least score 42 unanswered points against their defense. Again, 7.8 points per game. This is a team that they got some dogs, man. Outside of the ones we mentioned, we're still kind of waiting on, you know, a little bit more research on them, some stats. But nonetheless, just these three guys, again, Jones, Freeman, and McCullough, they're they're guys to look out for. Absolutely. Again, just so much next-level talent on both sides of the ball, and and that's why we're here, man. Regionals, it doesn't get much better than this. Almost does, but we'll we'll talk about it next week. (laughs) Once again, it's our game night built by Von Tobel. Kickoff, 6.30 Central Time. We'll be live about 6, 6, 6.10 from Freed Field at Penn High School. That's going to do it all for us here on Region Football Weekly. As a great Mike Dewan says, it's another week in the book. Steal my line, man. What am, I, what am I supposed to say? I don't know. Do you have another line? Did you no, have another man, line? No, man, that's it, man. That's that all was I, your line That's again? all I had in the chamber. Oh. But, yeah, we got a couple more weeks of this, man. It's what we got semi say next week. And then, oh, yeah, well, at least then, have one more region team next week just due to the fact that Valpo and yeah. Maricol play. So, nevertheless... We will have at least one team in semi state. Survival of the fittest. But let's make it two, man. Let's again put the region on the map, you guys. It's you guys have made it this far. Let's keep it going. Yeah. But it's yeah, only a couple more weeks of this, man. We got semis and then and then state Thanksgiving weekend and then that might be it for Region Football Weekly. So yeah, yeah man, it's flown by, man. You know, it's you want to yeah. say it, don't you? No, man, you stole my line. I'm gonna try and switch something up, but it's yeah, it's it's been a fun time here doing this. And you know, we got the Bears on right now, but I'd probably rather be here than than watching that barn burner. So. Yeah, cheers to everybody, and let's have a good Friday. <laughs> Another week in the books. You don't have to say it. Come on, I man. I got to say it Come twice. On, so man. big thank you to our producer. I call it next week, man. I Zach get it next Sinelli, week. Zach co-host Mike Dewan, our executive producer Chris Ramirez, and our operations manager Rich Castillo. Remember, two game night built by Von Tobel. 
Crown Point at Penn, 6.30 kickoff. We'll be live at about 6, 6.10. We'll be posting the link to both of our games. You can view it on ihsaatv.org. Link will be posted, I believe, from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. every three hours on our Facebook page. Click that link. It'll take you to which game you want to watch. And, of course, we have Valpo at Merrillville, 7 o'clock kickoff. 6.30 will be live from Merrillville High School. So, remember, two game night built by Von Tobles. Both of those links will be available on our Facebook page tomorrow. But this is it for the Region Football Weekly Show in our Centier Bank Studios. Have a great Thursday night, and we'll see you tomorrow night. But you're watching us on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and code upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4, ajobdoneright.com. Earn while you learn from the best hands in the business. The Bricklayers Allied Craft Workers for Indiana Kentucky Apprenticeship. That's right, this is a paid apprenticeship. I'm getting an education while learning a trade and getting paid for it. The thing that surprised me the most about this apprenticeship program is the respect I've received after the proper time and training. Classes start soon, so apply now. There are training centers throughout Indiana and Kentucky. We are the Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers for Indiana Kentucky Apprenticeship. The best hands in the business. For over 100 years, Burns Funeral Home and Crematory has been assisting families in their time of need. Serving Northwest Indiana, the staff at Burns Funeral Home will help guide your family in creating a meaningful ceremony. From a simple to elaborate to traditional or unique, the caring family at Burns Funeral Home will tailor a ceremony to fit your needs. And for your other loved ones, Burns Funeral now has a pet cemetery and crematory. Visit Burns Funeral Home. Dot com or give them a call at 219-942-1117. Lights Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blythe's can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblythes.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop.